Hey guys, last time we have seen all about the batteries. This time we'll cover up the battery management system. In this video, we'll see why do we need a battery management system? What things a BMS does keep the batteries safe and healthy? And finally, we'll see different topologies of the BMS. So, buckle up guys. Let's go for a ride. First, we will see why battery needs the constant monitoring. The battery pack is made up of tiny cells connected in parallel and series combination. These tiny cells are very dumb and highly unstable. The voltage across the cells has to be precisely monitored or balanced. If we don't do so, then we can end up destroying the battery pack and safety of the whole electric vehicle might compromise. When a battery is charging, we have to apply the voltage and current to it. If this voltage is more than specified limit mentioned in the datasheet, then it is considered that the battery is charging with over voltage, which will eventually increase the temperature of the battery. Every battery has a specific range of temperature in which the battery works fine. So if this temperature increases, which ends up reducing the state of charge, this condition also increases the internal resistance of a battery and eventually the power loss across the battery increases. On the other hand, if the voltage applied to this battery is lower, then also it will lead to over temperature. Over voltage and under voltage lead to over temperature which degrades the battery life. And if we use the battery at a temperature lower than its specific range, then its capacity decreases. Due to over temperature, the batteries might catch fire as well. There are always slight differences in the state of charge, discharge rate, capacity, impedance between two cells, even if the cells are from same manufacturer and produced in the same lot. While charging or discharging these cells altogether, some cells experience a lot of stress in battery pack so they lead to degradation. Well, to avoid all these scenarios, we have to monitor over voltage and under voltage limit of the battery. We have to keep the close watch on battery temperature and we have to ensure that the charge level of each battery stays within the recommended SOC range by balancing every cell. So, the efficient and effective way to maintain a close watch on these tiny cells, a fast and smart battery management system has to be used. A BMS can monitor all of this and provide real-time diagnostics. Now let's see how a BMS helps to keep these batteries healthy. First is the discharge control. The primary goal of a BMS is to keep the battery away from operating out of its safety zone. The BMS must protect the cell during discharging. Second is the state of charge determination. One of the features of the BMS is to keep the track of SOC of the battery. The SOC indicates the user about current capacity of the battery. There are several methods to determine SOC. The SOC can be determined through direct voltage measurement, coulomb counting and through the combination of coulomb counting and voltage measurement. Well, there are tons of different methods. But for simplicity, we'll see the voltage measurement and coulomb counting method. To measure the SOC directly, we can simply use a voltmeter. Because the voltage decreases more or less linearly during the discharging cycle of the battery. So if the voltage decreases, the SOC of the battery also decreases. In the coulomb counting method, the current coming in 
or going out of a battery is measured over time to calculate the relative amount of charge. It's like pouring water into a water tank and fetching it out. Imagine the battery as a jar and water is like electrical energy or charge. The BMS measures how much current is going inside the battery and calculates the charge deposited inside the battery over time. When the calculated charge is near to the rated capacity of the battery, then BMS informs that battery is fully charged. And while discharging, it follows the same process. In addition, these both methods could be combined. The voltmeter could be used to monitor the battery voltage and calibrate the SOC when the actual charge approaches at the end. Third task is the state of health determination. It is battery's ability to store charge and deliver electrical energy compared with a new battery. Any physical parameter of a battery such as internal resistance or conductance changes significantly with age can be used to indicate the SOH of the cell. In practice, the SOH could be estimated from by the internal resistance or the cell conductance. As the battery gets older, the internal resistance of the battery increases. Next task of the BMS is cell balancing. It is a method of compensating weaker cells by equalizing the charge on all cells in the chain to extend the overall battery pack's life. In the whole battery pack, small differences between the cells due to tolerances or operating conditions give rise to uncertainties. During charging, weak cells may get overstressed and become even weaker until they eventually fail, which causes the whole pack to fail prematurely. So to avoid this, BMS has to provide cell balancing. Majorly, there are two cell balancing techniques. First is the active balancing, second is the passive balancing. BMS also has to work as a logbook because the SOH of a battery is a relative term. It compares the new battery and old battery. So this measurement should hold a record of the initial conditions of a cell and should be able to compare with the same cell as it gets old. So the logbook function of the BMS would record such important data into the memory. Next is the communication. BMS provides information about health, SOC along with much more details for service and maintenance. In general, the user who is driving the vehicle is not a technical guy. So the information should be simple and interpretable. On the other hand, the battery service technicians or engineers demand very precise technical information for research or fault detection. And it's BMS job to provide the necessary data to both of them. So these all things a BMS should do for safety of the battery. Well, there are different types of topologies of a BMS hardware. It shows how we can connect the cell with a BMS. First is the distributed topology. In this topology, there are small voltage and discharge monitor circuits which communicate with the master controller of the BMS. The advantages of this design is that it is simple to implement and has high reliability. The disadvantage of this system is it requires a large number of small PCBs and becomes difficult to mount on every type of cell. Next is the modular structure. In this, multiple slave BMS controllers are used to fetch the data and forward it to master controller. So, no special PCBs are necessary to connect the individual cell. However, isolated master-slave communications are quite difficult. Third comes the centralized topology. A centralized master control unit is directly connected to each cell of the battery pack. The controller unit protects and balances all the cells. Using this topology decreases the hardware, but excess heat could be generated because the controller 
is the only source for cell balancing. In addition, the cells are distributed within various locations of the vehicle, which requires a lot of wiring. So I think that's it for now. Next time we'll see how this BMS works and what is it made of. Till then, stay tuned. If you have any question, let me know in the comment section. Hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe to my channel and finally, thanks for watching.